web, tenemos algunas de desarrollo para móviles. Está, están, estén pendientes, por favor, en Twitter. Los que tienen cuenta de Twitter, por favor, si nos regalan el nick ahorita para seguirlos, voy a estar allí. Bueno, este evento es de ustedes, espero que lo disfruten. Comenzamos con una charla muy interesante que tiene mucho desarrollo en diferentes ámbitos, hardware, software, también con video, media. Y entonces, sin hacer la introducción, hacer la introducción más larga, los dejo con Walk on the Troll y espero que ahorita nos confirmen si la traducción está funcionando bien. Entonces, creo que un aplauso de bienvenida para Walk on the Troll. computer now. Uh, it's uh, different from a normal computer. Maybe I go to this side. Okay. So, it's not a normal computer like a notebook or like a desktop. Instead, it has a lot of connectors that are very media oriented. Like it has those DMX connectors up there. I'm not sure you can see them very well. Those are typically to connect stage equipment. It has two MIDI connectors on the right to it. It has video in, Ethernet, VGA out, and audio in and out. So this computer is not uh, meant to be used like a normal notebook that you're sitting in front to do email, or to do word processing, or to do spreadsheet. Instead, this computer is meant uh, to be used to create audio and video works. My plan was to, to um, leave some room for questions after every slide. I'm not sure how this can work. If someone has questions, I think we should do the questions after every slide because the whole presentation is fairly long and has a lot of details. So we will have forgotten already what's at the beginning once we're at the end. So if people have questions here, maybe they can ask them now. I think he said he will translate, and I, I hear, but I don't have a headset. Okay, we're still trying to figure out how someone can ask a question in Spanish. Yeah, go ahead. really understand you. Wait. Here comes the solution. Yeah. 
Volume, ajá. They use the microphone. Yeah. Oh, cool. So. That's good. <laughs> Pero es que el traductor necesita transmitir la pregunta en español en inglés para vos. Entonces me encargo de traducir. Ah, ok. Bueno, tiene la pregunta que Ok. So, I guess you could just hang the microphone to the wall. Aló, ¿listo? Según entendí, es una nueva computadora que usted está implementando, ¿cierto? Con un nuevo hardware. Con un nuevo hardware. Okay, I use this one again now. Okay, cool. Um, well, yeah, it's we're developing this. So uh, the pictures are real. These boards already exist. Um, but we're currently working on these boards. I mean, this is the development track. It's a big development project. Many people participate throughout the whole world, actually. Um, and this is a work in progress. But these pictures are real pictures. These boards exist. Eh, ese nuevo hardware se puede implementar o se puede complementar con otro hardware que ya esté creado, o sea, con el que ya está existente se puede integrar o ese es totalmente aparte o no es complementario. Yeah, perfect. No, it's not closed. It's totally open. In fact, uh, the design is open. The design can be copied by other companies. It's copyleft hardware. And actually, this is a very good question to lead to the next slide, because on the next slide, we will have the devices that are typically plugged into this computer. Oh, no. Wrong. <laughs> on the next slide, we first have a more technical block diagram. For the technical people among you, um, this is basically the same thing. The Milky Mist 1 board, mm, you see the different connectors, 128 megabyte RAM, 32 megabyte flash, micro SD card. It's a computer. It's just not a normal computer like a desktop or a notebook. It's a media. It's a creative computer. Let's just go to the next slide now, which is more fun, which is the environment of the Milky Mist 1. So once you have the Milky Mist 1, what do you do with it? You connect it to other devices that are media-centric. You connect it to a camera, you connect it to a microphone, you connect it to controllers, you connect it to DJ or VJ equipment. So mm, this is the world that Milky Mist 1 lives in. It doesn't live in an office. Bueno, alguna pregunta? Eh, no me queda muy claro si el hardware como tal se emplea para trabajos, por decir algo como la creación de cortinas ya a nivel profesional o es simplemente eh, manejo muy in-house. Uh.
Well, we want it to be at the level that it can be used by professionals for sure. But I'm from the free software scene and we're implementing everything with free technologies. So we would value freedom over features. So probably right now you can buy higher spec equipment from traditional companies. But we're doing all these things in free technologies that other people can reuse, can copy, can do whatever they like with. We're totally open. But within being open, yeah, we would like to be as good as possible. We would like to be the best. Eh, este, eh, hay forma de, o sea, acá en Colombia tendríamos acceso a estos equipos y si dentro de sus planes está desarrollar estos equipos, pero portátiles. No solamente para casa, sino que uno lo pueda llevar a cualquier lado. Okay, this device right now is not battery powered, so it's not very mobile. First answer that one. About Colombia, yeah, for sure, definitely available in Colombia. Um, we're working very closely with Carlos and Andres from EMQ Bit and from the UNAL University. So Colombia is big time involved in this. That's one reason why I'm here. Pues esta herramienta, pues ya por lo que vimos esto, ¿qué utilidad se le puede dar a la herramienta por lo menos al conectarla a una cámara video? Porque pues por lo que estuve leyendo, más que todo maneja la parte del audio, eh, de pronto, ¿qué opciones, o sea, qué otros dispositivos se pueden conectar y qué posibilidades para trabajar existe con esos dispositivos? Okay, let's go to the connector slide again because that will answer your question. It's basically a box, a computer that allows you to work with different type of digital media. And you can connect any device to it that will fit in those connectors. Now, of course, the software has to support that as well. So today, we're not there yet. Today, this is just a board with connectors and we're working on the software. Today, it doesn't work. But if development continues over the next few years, we will add all the software that is necessary to talk to any device that you can plug into those connectors. Any device that has a MIDI output, any device that has a MIDI input, any device that has a DMX in, DMX out, any device that has a video out, so you can plug it into those video connectors. And then the Milky Mist computer can do anything with, with the data that's coming in or out in real time. Okay, maybe we try to go forward a little. My next slide talks about the software that is running on this computer. It's called Flickr Noise. Flickr Noise is the top level application that you use to control what the different devices that you have connected to it are doing. The software is 100% free software from the very GUI all the way down into the CPU. That's the special thing about this computer, that the CPU is, is implemented as free software and running on the FPGA. So this is, I think, new. This is a computer that is 100% free, not only into the kernel, but even below that, into the CPU. FPGAs can be programmed in Verilog and VHDL. I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with FPGAs. They, they have become more and more common and they allow interesting new things. For me, the most outstanding thing is that they can parallelize very well. Um, in software engineering, many people try to parallelize better, but it's all kind of, I think, it's all not very successful. But once you go into the FPGA level, you can work with, with real-time, high bandwidth video and audio data in real time and let the FPGA process all that data in parallel. All the different channels, everything can be done in parallel. Flicker Noise is the VJ app to render hardware accelerated visual effects comparable to Milk Drop. We will see this later, I will demo a little bit. Um, Milk Drop is a plug-in for Winamp. Winamp is a software maybe you know on Windows. 
you can play music, and then they have all sorts of plugins, and one plugin is called Milk Drop, and quite popular, I think. So as a first step in Flickr Noise, we will implement Milk Drop style effects, just as a first application of this computer. Later, we will then add more software that will allow to create visual patches connecting all the interfaces of the computer, sound, MIDI, video, all of them. So you can create visual patches to combine all this data that's coming in or out. So this is the slide about the software. Any questions about the software? El software eh, flick, Flickr Snash es desarrollado para el, para el core CPU que están utilizando o trabaja directamente en la FPGA. No, Flickr Noise is an application that works at a high level, and yes, it does run on the CPU that we're using here. But it's not running in the FPGA. Flickr Noise is a normal application that runs in user space, or rather, it runs on the RTEMS uh, real-time kernel. Another question about software? No. There? There's one. Um, Algunas veces uno tiene problemas con los codecs o con algunos formatos de sonido. Eh, en caso tal que exista ese problema, uno puede instalar el parche así exista o no exista. O sea, siempre van a estar disponibles los parches 100%. O sea, sí. Since this project is a free software project, uh, we cannot and don't want to implement patented codecs. Now, in the multimedia world, many codecs have, are, are patented. So we will stay away from patented codecs. Um, however, except for the patent problem, yeah, I think we can implement any, any codecs because it's just software and we can, we can draw from the whole pool of free software that already exists. So for any codecs, I would say, if it's, if it's a patented codec, we don't really know how to bring it to this platform. If it's not a patented codec, yes, all, pa all non-patented codecs should be on this platform. Okay, we go to the next slide. This project is a copyleft hardware project. Mm. That's a new term. Mm, it's a little bit like open hardware, open source hardware, open design hardware. We just wanted to make this more clear. We call it copyleft hardware. Copyleft hardware means that we encourage other companies to take what we're doing, improve it, and manufacture it themselves or make, make their own products on top of it. It doesn't matter. Everything is free. Everything is copylefted. So all software is free, and all plans necessary for manufacturing are also free. So I'm coming, I mentioned uh, very early on that I live in China. I'm coming from China, and I'm coming from a manufacturing background. Uh, the last couple of years, I've spent a lot of time learning <laughs> all the hundreds of different ways you can manufacture computers and electronics. So everything we're doing on the manufacturing side will be opened up. It allows companies that want to take this and modify it and turn a different product out of it to use what we've created as a starting point and improve upon it. There's no need to redo it. The CPU I already mentioned uh, is also open, is also copyleft. It's a GPL licensed CPU project. SOC system on a chip, that means the CPU plus the peripherals, SOC. And that copylefted CPU is running on the FPGA chip. Commercial use is encouraged, manufacture and share back your improvements. So this is not a project where other people who want to reuse this 
have to be non-commercial or are not allowed to make changes. No. If someone who wants to use this can do this, can do it in a commercial way, doesn't have to pay any royalties or license fees to us. It's all free. Software, just in this case, it's hardware. It's copyleft hardware. This picture there is a layout uh, of the Milky Mist 1 board. Just OK, there's a question about copyleft hardware. Eh, pues vemos que hay un hardware, ¿cierto? Del Milky Miss One. Me gustaría saber en qué arquitectura está basado ese procesador. Si de pronto está en un micro lace, no sé. Mm, let's just go back to the block diagram. Everything that's on this computer is on this block diagram. There is nothing else. So the only real chip is this Xilinx FPGA, a very new and modern Spartan 6 Xilinx FPGA. Everything else is just um, analog digital converters and uh, small little pieces that are not running software. So all software runs on this big chip in the middle. And we're using a Lattice Myco 32 core. Lattice, to answer your real question, Lattice Myco 32 core. I hope this that was your question and I answered it. All right. ¿Qué buscan? Pues como la 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 herramienta el el hardware es libre. ¿Cuál es como como la motivación de ustedes? ¿Qué es lo que buscan al desarrollar esto y darle libertad de uso a las personas de uso comercial y de uso no comercial? Well, I'm a, I'm a manufacturer, I'm coming from China, I'm not worried in competing with others on manufacturing. I really like manufacturing. I think in China we have really, really strong power to do good manufacturing. So I think people will always, for some things, come back to me. Maybe not for everything. Maybe they take this, they modify it, they build their own things. But maybe at some point they will come back to me because I'm a manufacturer. I believe I can, I can manufacture good stuff. Eh, mi pregunta es acerca de, de, del software que usan para diseñar el PCB. ¿Es software libre también o están usando otra aplicación privativa? No, that's also all free software. We're just using GCC as a compiler. We're using C. We're using Verilog. The Verilog is compiled with the Xilinx uh, synthesis tools. Oh, the PCB. Uh, yeah, we're using Altium Designer. The PCB, we're using Altium Designer. We would like to use free tools like KiCad, but it's very hard. So we start with Altium Designer, and then later we have to see whether we can do it in KiCad. OK, I go on a little bit here. What works today? This is an x-ray picture of the FPGA. What works today is we have a Lattice Myco 32 CPU running. DDR SD RAM works. The peripherals that work today are VGA out, audio, and Ethernet. Graphics acceleration. What does not work today basically is the MIDI stuff, the DMX stuff, video in. Today, these things don't work yet. We're working on it. On the software side, we only have a very basic milk drop renderer that I will show in my demo or another slide or two later. Let's just proceed to the next slide. Ah, that is already the demo. So um, I have a develop. Ah, another question. Here you go. No, 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 espérate que estoy pensando para hacerlo bien. El, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo hacen para que la FPGA procese en paralelo? El, el core del procesador es 
es, supongo que es un procesador normal. ¿Cómo hacen para procesar en paralelo? Hmm, <laughs> it's just an FPGA, and in Verilog you can you can make things run in parallel. It's it's uh, it's automatically like that. The lattice micro core is a normal core, just one, and then around that we have the peripherals. I'm just saying the FPGA allows to parallelize everything. I mean the FPGA runs at 83 megahertz, 83. Compare this to your desktop that has two or three gigahertz. So the FPGA only runs at 83 megahertz, but it can process in real time all audio and video data because it can do a lot of things in parallel that on your desktop you would have to run in software. We talk about it, we talk about it after, the, after the talk. Okay, um, now I will uh, switch this VGA thing here over to the Milky Mist board. Maybe, can we turn down the lights a little or no? Okay, we just try. Okay, very nice, yeah, that looks better. So I need to explain this setup here a little bit. We have this board here, which is basically the predecessor to the Milky Mist 1. The Milky Mist 1 is so new that I didn't manage to bring one with me. Uh, we just made the first ones two weeks ago. And they're currently in Paris, somewhere in Paris, somewhere in Taipei, but I don't have one here. So the board that I have here is the predecessor to the Milky Mist 1. It's a Xilinx development board. And we're running these milk drop effects on the board. They come out over VGA. And they are influenced by the music that is running on this little music player here. Can we make... Is it... Oh. Okay, I can hear some music, so that's good. So the music is coming in over, over the microphone in, and the music will impact the video effects. Can you guys hear the music? This shows this milk drop stuff that I was talking about, and it shows two interfaces of this board running. Audio in, VGA out, in conjunction. If I unplug the sound, the video will become, uh, the, the VGA will become less mm, varied, less rich. If we add it back in, then we get the effects. In every milk drop, the way the music is, is um, worked into the video is different. So later we will switch through a, different, a couple different milk drops. Okay, do we have any questions about this?
some different peripherals to make our company like hardware. They could take what we did, modify it, and add their own peripherals. But there will be no PCI. It's about bringing different video and audio signals together in real time and processing them in real time. Yeah, definitely. That's if we fail on that, then we fail on the whole project. So, yes, we want to make that work. Pues en ese en ese punto pues es una entrada de audio que modifica la la visualización que está que tenemos ahí. Eh, en el caso de que entrara, como tiene todos esos periféricos, en el caso de que hubiera una entrada de, digamos, de alguna fotografía, como se puede ver que se pueda conectar de pronto una cámara fotográfica o alguna entrada de video, eh, ¿cuál sería la respuesta que veríamos en la salida de VGA? It depends on the software, on the visual patches that you're running on the computer. It's, it, it is a fully programmable computer, and we hope to bring a lot of software onto this computer. So, it could be anything. The computer is fully programmable. Sí, eso. Pero por lo menos desde desde su visión que está tan involucrada en el proyecto, independientemente de lo que podría hacer otra compañía. ¿Hay planes de pronto de implementarle eso al software? I will not do that. I'm I'm focusing on the manufacturing side, but we're connected into the whole free software scene. I think there's a lot of software out there, and today we can already run the Linux kernel. We think we'll be able to bring many many applications onto this board. Um, so. I can't answer for all these projects that exist, what they will do. Okay, let's see whether we find another milk drop effect. I think it's already more or less clear. I mean, these milk drop effects are roughly. Back to my presentation. Back on the presentation. Next slide. Yeah, well, this is the development track. So <laughs> this is a huge development project. Uh, I'm doing the manufacturing side in China. That's a lot of work. Others are working on the software. Some people are working on the FPGA. Some are working on the kernel. These are the, some of the things that we hope will happen in the next 12 months. And a lot of this actually also depends on more people joining, 
more people understanding what this is and more people taking on this part or that part. So we found a really cool guy in Beijing also, a neighbor actually. His name is Rez, a Spanish guy, uh, and his studio is called Core Labs. So Rez from Core Labs will design the case. Today you see that both the board that I'm showing here as well as the pictures I had earlier is just a board and just connectors. Now that's not, that's not a good product. Of course we need a really cool case. So Rez from Core Labs will start to work on the case. Then we have to work on the missing peripherals to make them work. Right now they're on the board, but they don't work yet. So in the next 12 months, we will work on making these things work, especially what you see here, USB, video in, MIDI, DMX. Finally, we, will not, we, we not only want to get Linux to run on this board, which already does run, but we want to get the RTEMS uh, real-time system to run because it will be better suited uh, for the visual patches and to, to process all the data in real time. So that's another big task that we hope will happen over the next 12 months. And finally, the end user application. Right now I'm clicking on the on little buttons there. Of course, it could be much, much better. So in the next 12 months, we will work on this flicker noise application. So there's a lot of different people that do all these things, not just me. I'm just, I'm, I'm a four person, I'm representing a four person company. I'm just doing the manufacturing. But there's a lot of other groups and people, also here in Colombia, like I said, EMQ Bit and the UNL University, that are working on different parts of this big project. Any questions about that? No sé si usted ya lo mencionó, eh, algún link o una dirección URL donde podamos consultar o tele, o bueno, fuera de la Universidad Nacional o las personas que usted menciona, pero una página web como tal donde podamos consultar los avances y esas cuestiones. Yeah, cool question. Sure, of course. Um, I didn't add any URLs or web pages into this presentation because you can just Google. <laughs> All of these things that I mentioned here, you can just Google Milky Mist is a big project that's already going on for several years. You just Google Milky Mist and you will find all the different mailing lists and IRC forums and whatnot. And for the local contacts here in Bogota, actually Andres is sitting right here. <laughs> so if you want to stay in touch with this project, you could talk with me after this talk or you talk with Andres who's sitting right here in the first, in the first row on the left side. Okay. Ah, here, Andres. ¿Qué porcentaje de la FPGA está siendo usada? On the old development board, it was 70 to 80 percent. On the old development board. On the new, we have a new board now with the Spartan 6. I don't know. It's probably less. But I don't know. It could be 50 percent or 40 percent. I don't know. Less than 70 or 80. ¿Hay suficientes recursos en la FPGA para implementar un codec de video en tiempo real? I don't know. <laughs> He's a really good guy, so uh, I don't want to embarrass myself. He knows that we have to try this, we have to work on this. This is a development project. <laughs> we will try, we're optimistic. This is a real innovative high-tech project. We're doing really, really new things here. And the codes that we're developing will be free and maybe can later be used in making uh, ICs, mm, real chips, not just FPGAs, but real ICs. But that's several years later. We first have to make it work on the FPGA. Okay, we go to the next slide. The next slide is basically the same idea the plan, but no, not the plan for the next year, the plan for the next five years. First, make all of Milky Mist 1 work really well. There are too many loose ends right now. A lot of what I'm talking about is just our vision, our plan, our, our goal, our dream. But it doesn't work today. 
So I think it will take several years to make all this work and to make it work with free technology. That leads me to the second point. Um, we're hoping that this project will become the basis for the production of ICs that are freely licensed. Right now, when you buy an IC, an, a normal chip, it's always proprietary, it's always closed. But with the technology that we're developing on this board, we hope that once we have a really nice chip implemented in Verilog, a very stable design, a very efficient design, we can go and make ICs out of that, which would bring down the cost of each IC dramatically. I mean, right now, basically, the FPGA costs about $60 a chip, a piece, 60 US dollars. And if we would make our own ICs, the per unit cost can go as low as $2 or $1 without looking at the large one-time costs. So right now we're working on this one-time cost. First we need a strong technological base and then later we hope that this will become the foundation for free ICs. And finally, we're trying to sell those boards to VJs or to other people that want to do creative things with those boards. So we're trying to build a business out of Milky Mist, sell copyleft hardware, to reward contributors and finance more free innovations. Con respecto al costo de estas boards, ¿cuál sería pues un promedio normal de un costo? Si yo la quiero, si la quiero adquirir. Production cost may be 150 US dollars or so right now. And uh, we're not offering them yet. I think once we have a case and once we have the whole thing finished, we will probably start to sell it for $499. And then we will try to bring down the cost. So maybe in the first year it will be 499 and then maybe 399 299 199 It's a normal hardware business. You want to bring the costs down and the volume up. So today, the, the cost of the components, 150 plus the case, maybe we will sell for 499 because we have to reward a lot of contributors that are helping work on this thing. So we cannot sell it for 199 We, we would have to stop working on it immediately. So in the first year, I think 499 and then you can expect us to bring it down. Si, si entiendo, parte del objetivo a largo plazo es crear eh, chips para pues que contengan todo esto. Entonces, eh, me pregunto qué tanto de microelectrónica tendría que saber una persona para contribuir en eso o si con programar, no sé, en VHL es suficiente. No, no, you can contribute in many, many ways. In fact, you said VHL is enough, VHDL, of course. I mean, it's not, we don't even have a shortage in people on the very low or VHDL level. We have so many loose ends on this. Application developers can help, even web, uh, web developers, people that can program in Python or in PHP. I think there are many, many ways to contribute to this project. And in fact, the case design, maybe someone makes their own case. That's, that's totally fine. We have a lot of RepRap fans here. Um, I like all these RepRap things. They built their own case. That's great. So there are many ways how you can contribute to this. And of course, you can also contribute with creative content. Like you saw those milk drop effects. I mean, you could do many more things, and someone has to contribute the creative stuff too. It's not just the technology. OK, I think that already almost brings me to the end of my talk. I just want to say thanks uh, for listening, and we can have some more questions, no problem. Over there on the table, I have some notebook stickers and some flyers. Feel free to take them, maybe one a person or so, not that they're all gone when the first three are there. But uh, feel free to help yourself to those notebook stickers as a little thank you for listening to the talk. OK, more questions? No, no question. OK.
Eh, mi pregunta es sencilla. Eh, a través de este software, ¿qué otro alcance podemos tener, ah, aparte de, de, la, de, la, de la fuerza que nos da para, para usarlo a través de… Pues según lo que entendí, es que el software se basa en… en, en darle herramientas a los a los BJs, ¿cierto? De, de animación y es, esta cosa. Pero entonces eh, ya y me dice que el código es abierto. Entonces qué otra qué otro uso podemos darle a este a este software o que eh, sí. Don't know. I, I see this as a computer. So for me, it's just a new style of computer. Forget the desktop. Forget the notebook. So. You can, you can use this as, your, as the main media center in your home. I didn't use the word media center in my whole talk because I, I don't like these media centers. They're just horrible. But of course, you can also see this as a media center and you can play movies on this thing. You can see this as a computer that you can use just like any other media center that you may have for projection, for watching movies. You can attach a hard disk to it. It has, a, it has two USB hosts. So you can attach keyboard to it, you can attach a mouse to it, you can attach a hard disk to it, theoretically. Hablando ya eh, a nivel comercial, ¿sí? y las implicaciones pues, que puede llegar a tener, eh, el o el cambiar, eh, mi aplicación de, de software que digamos hace algo similar en, digamos en materia de apoyo para, para efectos de video eh, para el DJ sí. ¿Qué me aporta a mí comercialmente cambiar ese software por este nuevo hardware sí digamos a, a futuro en, en el momento en que salga ya comercialmente o en aplicaciones futuras, ¿qué me representaría a mí como productor o como diseñador o, o, o en cualquier área de, de desarrollo, modificar eh, mi modo de trabajar, cambiar un software que me hace esta, esta operatividad y cambiarlo por el hardware? No, you would want to wait until there's something really interesting for you in this thing. I think as a, if you're currently a producer or a designer or a creative person already, it's too early right now to join in this project. It cannot do anything useful for you. The best you can do right now is to tell us what you want, to tell us what's missing. There is a fairly large free software, free culture scene out there that likes to get these things to work really well. We are not the creative people, we're the technology people. I'm the manufacturer even. So we depend on creative people to tell us what they want, what is really cool for them. Then we try to get this implemented and at that point you will know why you want this. Because we implemented what you really asked us to do. Veo que tiene un puerto de red, se podría conectar a no sé una red de área local o y por medio de ella compartir o descargar contenido si ¿Sí, sí tiene esa, esa opción o no I have a lot of a lot of cracking in my headphone I only heard the Ethernet part yes you can connect it to a LAN definitely in fact the Ethernet is is one of the important interfaces of it yes you can connect it to a LAN the rest I didn't hear Eh, o sea, la pregunta también es, si puedo conectar esta máquina a una red de, la, de área local, descargar contenidos de la red y compartir información con, con otros usuarios que, que también tengan la aplicación y hacer mezcla o no sé, en tiempo real. I heard parts. Yes, you can. Yes, it's a, it's a computer. It has a flash memory card. It has storage. Of course, it can be connected to the network, so it can be a normal node, a router in the network. It can it can store content. It can distribute content. Yeah, for sure. The answer is yes. 
Okay. Oh, there's another one. This thing is just Buenas tardes. Eh, mi pregunta es qué tanta capacidad de almacenamiento tiene este hardware? It has a micro SD connector. So right now you can get 16 gigabyte cards. Maybe you can get 32 gigabyte cards soon. 16 or 32 gigabytes. Um, will, will it be able to run um, Google Chrome OS? And do you think that the fact that, um, <laughs> do you think that the fact that uh, many things are, are moving to the cloud, that uh, less processing are, are needing are needed um, on the client, and that might be a, a good thing for uh, free software hardware because uh, less power is needed to run um, the software in general. And and uh, oh yeah, we'll be able to run something like uh, Chrome OS, Google Chrome OS. And uh, do you think that the fact that many of the software processing are moving to the cloud, it will be uh, uh, better for um, free software hardware because um, not a lot of power will be needed to, to run things in general. Okay, the cloud question is, is different. The cloud is a challenge for free software as well. You know, they, we have developed these licenses like AGPL, Afero GPL. This device has nothing much to do with the cloud. Mm, it's a box that can process multimedia data. It's part of the internet. You can connect it to the network. So of course, it's also part of the cloud. But uh, I don't see why you would run a web server on this or why you would make this the central node in your network. I think you could just have a normal server there. So can you run Chrome on it? Um, sure, why not? You can run Linux on it. So since you can run Linux on it, you can run Android, you can run Chrome OS. Yeah, it's imaginable, definitely, yes. It has 128 megabyte RAM, so maybe at the beginning will be a little bit hard. But we will for sure come out with newer versions in the future that have more, more uh, RAM. So with 128 meg, I think Chrome OS will be hard. But it's also a question that is like a little, it's like a couple steps ahead, because right now we're working on so many low level things. We're not at the level of Chrome OS yet. Okay, I think I hand the microphone back to Nelson. Nelson, here you go. Thanks a lot. Bueno, gracias para Wolfgang por la charla. Do you want to touch people now, I guess, around here? Yeah, you can tell them that I'm there. They can talk to me. They can okay. take notes. They can very well. Okay. Bueno, Wolfgang va a estar por ahí. Pueden hablar con él, hacerle preguntas que de pronto no tenían mucho, no, era, no estaban directamente relacionadas con la charla. Allí están los stickers de la Milky Mist. Y recuerden que estamos pendientes de seguirlos en Twitter y que estemos por ahí más comunicados. La próxima charla es a las 5, a las 5 de la tarde, ya en un rato.